Imelda Marcos is also holding on to many pieces of artwork by the masters, but they were, and uh, the PCGG and the OSG are running after those, those paintings. But they were able to sell last year two of the, mm. two of the most expensive. How did this happen? Would you, would you be familiar uh, with, that, with that case? Yes, and, and very quickly, you, uh, it was the New York District Attorney uh, that in fact recovered many of these paintings aside from other property uh, from Vilma Bautista. Ita, isa ito sa mga alalay na sinasabi ko kanina na bumibili ng mga ari-arian para sa mga Marcos. So when the New York District Attorney's Office recovered these paintings, they wanted to then uh, file criminal cases, so racketeering and tax evasion against Vilma Bautista because she was, she was the one who was the registered, who was the claimant owning owner of the paintings. Uh, the New York District Attorney's Office, in fact, asked me to assist them in the prosecution of these cases. So uh, a few years ago, about five years ago, I helped them figure out, you know, you know, tracing the ownership of this property all the way to the Philippine government. Uh, eventually, the New York District Attorney's Office won the case, convicted Vilma Bautista. She should soon be serving her sentence despite her age. Uh, but in the meantime, the paintings and the property involved in these cases uh, were claimed by other uh, parties aside from the Philippine government. So among the claimants, yung victims of the Marcos dictatorship, the same victims that filed the case in Hawaii and won against them. Isa pang claimant, yung pamilya ni, ni Vilma Bautista. And then in a, yung, another claim was filed by Imelda Marcos herself. So uh, what's called an interpleader case was filed dito sa New York uh, itong nangyari, no? itong, nung panahon ni Presidente Aquino, merong U.S. lawyer ang PCGG that represented the Republic, uh, which filed a claim to get the paintings back or to get the proceeds from the paintings. Uh, nung pinalitan na itong uh, abogado na ito, pinalitan ni, uh, nung pumasok na si, President, uh, si Mr. Duterte as President, he changed the lawyer and then changed the legal position of the Philippines and no longer wanted to claim the paintings mm. and the proceeds of the paintings. Uto si Tony Calida, tinanggal nila yung abogado, who I, in fact, was uh, also trying to assist. Uh, may pinalit na abogado, yung gusto nung uh, Solicitor General under Calida, na wag nang i-claim yung proceeds, no? na i-assert na lang daw yung sovereign immunity ng Pilipinas from being sued. But that doesn't work anymore because the paintings have already been recovered and you're now trying to get the money or the paintings themselves. So, makikita mo as an example that ginagamit na ngayon ng mga Marcos, yung Solicitor General mismo at ang gobyerno ng Pilipinas to effectively abandon these claims against these paintings. Those two paintings were covered by a litigation with the Sandigan Bayan. How, how were they able to sell it? They were able to sell it because the paintings are in the custody of the New York District Court. Uh, dahil ayaw ng Pilipinas i-assert yung claim niya over the paintings. Inutusan ni Kalida yung bagong abogado rito sa New York not to continue asserting the Philippine claim. Kahit ano pang sabihin mo na may kaso sa Sandigan Bayan, ako rin nung tumulo mag-file sa Sandigan Bayan, the fact is if you don't participate in the proceedings, then you can't take part in what happens to the to the paintings no yeah, yeah, but I, but to to also add something to this um young victims that filed a claim to the paintings will now actually get, get part of the uh proceeds of these paintings